Hello, let's talk about Sage Intech Inventory Control. Some of the key capabilities of inventory control within Sage Intech include the ability to manage all of your inventory. So if you are keeping track of quantity on hand and perpetual inventory for stocked items, if you're managing non-stocked items like supplies or office supplies or indirect materials, if you are doing light assembly and putting together kits, if you also need to keep track of services and miscellaneous charges, all of these can be managed within the inventory system. The inventory system is also an intricate, integral part of both purchasing and order management. During the purchasing and order management process, inventory can allow you to procure as well as sell all the items listed above, whether they're stocked, non-stocked, a service, or a charge. Inventory control allows you to track items with serialization and lot tracking, as well as creating the mask and the codes to set up those individual items that are being tracked by serial or lot. You have that also have the ability to do kits. So you can assemble either stocked or non-stock kits by taking items out of inventory and putting them together to sell to a customer as a group. Inventory control also allows you to manage drop shipments for items that you're selling but are not being sent into your warehouse but are being shipped directly from the vendor. Landed cost capability is also included to manage the inbound costs associated with the items that you are buying from your vendors. Full warehouse capability and multi-warehouse capability allowing you to manage aisle, row, and bin is included in the inventory application as well. Along with the ability to control and manage multiple warehouses, you also will have the ability to transfer products between those warehouses. And the last feature across the board that I want to talk about before we take a look at the product is you have all the supported cost methods and you're setting that up at the item level. Let's take a look at the application. Like other Sage Intact products, we'll start with the dashboard. So the dashboard allows us to build key performance indicators or metrics that are important to the user based on their role and responsibility within the organization. The dashboard that we're looking at here is one that includes inventory metrics. So we're looking at some statistical data at the top, like total square foot and sales by square foot, along with inventory information. What is our total inventory value today? Our inventory to sales ratio, our inventory terms, and then a total count of all of the active items within our inventory. Below are some graphics showing the total value of inventory broken out by our locations. In this case, we have four locations, as well as our sales by location. So the users will have the ability to not only create performance indicators, but also create reports and put them on dashboards for those inventory users. Within the inventory application, let's take a look at several different components. First, we'll start with the setup of the item. So an inventory item itself, when we're looking at an item, we can have items that are stocked, non-stocked, kits that are stocked and non-stocked, as well as tracking non-inventory items and items that we're buying just for, from purchasing. So let's take a look at stocked inventory items first. So first, we'll take a look at an item that we're buying from a vendor and selling to our customers. At the top, we can see some information that the item, the system's keeping track of. How many are currently on order from purchasing? How many do we currently have on hand in all of our warehouses? And how many do we have on hold or reserve from sales? Below, we can see that the item description, the item number, an extended description, how we're tracking the unit of measure for that item, how we're costing that item, in this case, this item is standard cost, the weight of the item, and putting that item in different groups for GL purposes. So we're tracking what general ledger accounts are gonna get hit when this item is either bought or sold. We're also keeping track of what we're 
our standard costs when we're buying the item, and then ultimately when we're selling the item. We can create lists or price lists for both purchasing and sales for all of our inventory items, and those items and price lists can be customer and vendor specific if necessary. If we're going to allow for dropship for that item, we can check that here as well. Below, you see a screen with the warehousing detail. So this is where we're identifying the cross-reference of where that item is being stocked in our multiple warehouses. So here we can see not only the warehouse, but the currency. We can see currently what is on order from purchasing on hand in that warehouse specifically and on hold from sales. And then the system is keeping track of the last cost date we sold it and the date we received it. To further dig into the details around the warehouse, if we show more details, this is where we're setting up the cycle count information, economic order quantity reorder point, order minimum and maximums, but we're also setting up row, aisle, and bin default information for that item. So this is gonna be important when we're receiving that item and putting it away. So this helps guide and tell us where that product should be stocked and put, put away on the shelf. As we're managing our cost for the item, regardless of the cost method, we can set up effectivity date and the system will use this as the base cost for the product based on those dates. Some additional information on the item, as we're setting it up, I had indicated we can track it by serial number, by lot number. It can also enable that this item is being tracked by bin. So this is where we're enabling the ability to do row, aisle, and bin. The UPC code, and then how we're caught, how many decimals we're costing for inventory sales and purchasing on the item. The system is also keeping track of the relationship between this item and the vendors we're buying it from. And we can establish the different stock numbers that the vendor calls this item by, as well as what their lead time, economic order quantity, and their cost information is captured here as well. When we're setting up, the system with the, within the warehouses, we can take a look at the establishment of those individual warehouses by entity. So in my environment, I have multiple entities. So by location, I could have multiple warehouses within a location. In my instance, I have one. And then here are the rows, aisles, and bins that I have set up for that warehouse and at that location. And we saw that on the item master as well. So from the setup process, now we can look at the individual tasks that a warehouse user can perform. Those tasks are listed here in the center. So if I'm going to receive inventory, I can receive inventory directly into the warehouse or I can do it as a warehouse transfer. I can also transfer inventory in and out between warehouses. So I have the capability to move product from warehouse to warehouse and show that movement. I can create inventory shippers or I can transfer inventory out using the shipping function here as well. But we'll take a look at the shipping function from sales order and order entry here in a minute. If there's any adjustments based on physical count or based on damage or scrap or spoilage to an item, I can record those transactions as well. The transaction definitions within the system are flexible and allow for this flexibility and capability for you to create different types of business processes to manage how and when the inventory gets adjusted and is it an increase or decrease to inventory. And the last component we were talking about is the ability to assemble a kit. So again, kits can be stocked or non-stocked, and those will allow us to group items together for light assembly and record that production of that, those items coming together to be sold to a customer. So let's look at the item master again, and let's take a look at a couple other types of items. We looked at a stocked inventory item. So let's look at a kit So on a stock kit, what we're doing is we're saying, here are the components and how many units it takes to make this item. 
So we're identifying the bill of material and those components out of inventory, and those items could be stocked or non-stocked. But the kit, once we produce that, so when we record that kit production, it's going to increase quantity on hand. Like we see here, there's 31 of this item of this completed board. That is how that information gets updated when we record that assembly. The other side is a non-stock kit. So if we looked at kits that are non-stock, the difference is, in this case, we'll look at the binder. So the finished good, this binder kit is not in inventory. We'll never see quantity on hand for that item. But what we will do is we will show the system, here are the components that need to be consumed during that kitting process. So at the time of that item being ordered, we're sending the pick ticket to the warehouse and telling those folks to go pull these items off the shelf and put them together to create this finished kit for that customer to be sold to the customer. Allows us to roll up this cost or roll up the information at this level and show the kit components or the finished good kit on the sales order and on the sales invoice. So lots of flexibility within the inventory system. So let's take a look at a couple things on how inventory fits into both purchasing and fits into sales order management. So in our process, as I was saying, we could create a purchase order. So let's create a purchase order for an item that we're stocking. So we'll buy from Computer Connection. We're going to buy this item. So we tell it what warehouse we're going to put it into, the quantity, and the location. The system is automatically pulling the price from the price list based on that vendor and item cross-reference. So this time now, what I can do is, once I've sent that purchase order to the vendor, I can convert that purchase order when the goods come in. In the warehouse, I would look at the PO receiver. So this is where I'm recording how many items did the vendor ship me. So if the vendor ships me all of the items that I requested, I don't have to make any changes on the PO receiver. I just go ahead and accept this and post. And that warning message is, I forgot to give it some tracking information. So in my case, this item is a lot tracked item. So I have to provide the lot number for that item. So the system will not allow me to move without telling it the quantity that I received and where I'm putting it away. So I have to give it some key information here to continue the transaction. So now at this time, that purchase order receiver can be converted to a vendor invoice. So when the invoice comes in from the vendor for me to pay, I have full traceability and tracking of start to finish what happened with that transaction. So at any point in time, I can go back and look at the information on that item and the traceability of from purchasing through receiving through invoicing. And the capability on all of the Sage Intact screens is this history tab. So this history tab allows me to see the full life cycle of the transaction. And the transaction I just ran through, as you can see, is here. So that quickly was an overview of inventory. Thank you.